Welcome back. Let's now take this conversation forward. ODM's gubernatorial candidates in Mombasa and Kakamega counties have filed petitions to force IEBC to conduct elections on 23rd of August. That's this coming Tuesday, as had been planned earlier. Now, for a second time, IEBC chairperson of Fulecha Bukati postponed elections indefinitely in the two counties. The leaders claim that this is punishment for supporting Azimio Laumoja. Abdul Swamad Sharif Nasir led other politicians and supporters in filing of the petition at the Mombasa Law Courts, while Fernandez Barasa also made a similar move in Kakamega Law Court. They accused Chebukati of being hell bent on imposing projects in the two counties. Tobias Chanji with more. A huge crowd turned up at Mombasa Law Courts, demanding that postponed Mombasa gubernatorial elections to be held as scheduled 23rd August. <laughs> For a second time, IEBC chairperson of Fula Chibukati postponed the elections until further notice through a gazette notice. That misprint was purposely done. That is something that does not even appear anywhere in law. There is no such excuse. Then worst part of it all, uh, without even consulting, without even doing anything at all, just because uh, our opponents decided to say that they are going to write uh, for the uh, uh, employees of IBC to be changed and then they decide uh, to be able to postpone elections, there's no basis. ODM's gubernatorial candidate Abdul Swamad Sharif Nasir led other politicians in blasting Chebukati even as he filed for a petition to compel IBC to undertake the elections on Tuesday and not any other day. We have already filed our petition. We expect uh, it to be uh, orders to be given uh, ex parte. Uh, what that means is that hopefully by today afternoon, it's because there's really nothing else to this. Sisi watu wa Mombasa, tumedumisha amani katika uchaguzi ambao umeisha. Na chebukati, usijaribu imani yetu. Wenzetu ambao wanatuogopa, ndio leo waona, wamekaa majumbani, hawana shida yote, lakini sisi tunasema, tunataka uchaguzi kwa haraka uweze kanavyo. We are telling chebukati, this country is bigger than your interest. Na sisi tunasema kama wakazo Mombasa, tuko tayari kupiga kura. Mombasa County has attracted seven candidates and most of them have registered their displeasure on Chebukati's move. Wave of anxiety, muna create gossip and innuendos. I think Mombasa needs to get over and done with the elections. So I'm still having a shock and I'm already consult my lawyer. First, he has to know there is a cost for doing things. It cannot be cost for IEBC, but not the cost for other Kenya and get away with him. This is a criminal. As things were boiling up in Mombasa, in Kakamega, leaders claimed that they were being punished for supporting Azimiola Umoja. They took to the streets to make their voice heard. Sit on a demand. We are ready for elections on 23rd. Uh, jana tumekuwa na mkutano na county returning officer ambaye anaitwa Mr. Joseph Ayata. Akatuambia kila kitu iko sawa na yeye ndio county returning officer. Similarly, they also filed for a petition insisting that just like any other Kenyans, the people of Kakamega also have a right to exercise their democratic right, which at the moment they claim has been deprived. Na watu wa Kakamega tumekadhabika sana na kitendo cha Chebukati kwa sababu tunayoyo ni njama ya kuiba kura za Kakamega County. File a case in the High Court in Kakamega and he, particularly it's a petition that has been signed by him and me petitioning the IEBC to hold election as scheduled on 23rd. Tobias Chanji, KT News, Mombasa County. <laughs> one of the other most talked about headlines uh, emanating from the elections of August the 9th, the fact that those two counties are yet to elect their governors uh, a week later and still do not know when this will happen. Anxiety and anticipation continues to reign in those two counties. Don't you think it's a bit unfair that uh, at least uh, 10 days after election day uh, these two counties are still uh, being held in suspense, they still do not know. Uh, people campaigned, uh, candidates spent money, the returning officers are still on the ground, yet they still do not know when the election will be held. I, I think saying an affair is an understatement. It's a, a tragedy for the residents of uh, both Kakamega and Mombasa to be kept in this manner of suspense 
Initially, they were told you're going to have an election on the 23rd. And then Mr. Chebukati says, now I'm suspending it indefinitely. The least he should have done is to give concrete reasons as to why there is a suspension and then give uh, an accurate date so that the candidates are not left in abeyance. Right now, the candidates don't know what to do. They're on a cliff. They don't know whether to stop their campaigns. They don't know whether to go on with their campaigns. And the voters are just uh, staring at the ceiling. They're staring at the sky. They don't know what is going on. I think Mr. Chibukati has got a burden to immediately inform uh, the nation when the elections are going to be held so that you don't create uh, any vacuum. So that you have the candidates knowing when the elections is going to take place, the voters knowing when they're going to cast their ballots, and also for the political realignment. Because you've seen uh, Mr. Baraza is a very worried man. Hassan Omar is a worried man. Malala is a worried man. He needs to clear this air. This is a, a failure in, uh, in strategic public communications because you cannot create a vacuum. The moment you create a vacuum, it's going to be filled by rumors, rumors, and more rumors, which is uh, unacceptable. But however, now this one gives uh, the political players a chance to realign the clever ones. We may again go with the bandwagon uh, effects that uh, everybody wants to be associated uh, with the winner. So probability of uh, Malala getting an upper hand in the elections in uh, Kakamega is extremely high. And also Senator Hassan Omar in uh, Mombasa is extremely high. Because everybody wants to be associated uh, with, uh, with what people call the presidency or the government. But more important is we can't allow Mr. Chibukati to keep those two counties under suspense. Okay. And uh, the, uh, one, uh, as uh, this person has mentioned, that is one of the most talked about rumors or uh, uh, discussions, the connection between the presidential election, uh, the process where it is so far, and what will that and how that will affect uh, the eventual election of governors in the two counties. Do you see it the same way? I actually see it the same way. And, you know, you can trace it back to, you know, how did we end up, you know, ha not having elections in Mombasa and... and, and, and Kakamega, these are strongholds of, 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 of uh, ODM and, and uh, as near by extension. And to what extent did that decision, which was occasioned by carelessness by IABC, uh, you know, affect the voter turnout in these two regions? Because we know if there is voter suppression in these two regions, the coalition that was most affected is definitely Azimio. And then, of course, probably, th th these are narratives that are becoming a lot more consistent, uh, you know, with... with uh, uh, a ploy to just disenfranchise uh, Azimio voters in Azimio strongholds. And now that, you know, they, there isn't a definitive answer to, you know, who won the presidency, maybe the delay tactic is just to wait and see what the Supreme Court uh, will do. And in the process, uh, you know, build on the bandwagon effect, you know, uh, that people would really want to elect a governor who is in line with the presidency and the government of the day. But I don't think that would work. I mean, you know, the moment you realize that this is the ploy that your enemy has and you have a stronghold, uh, as, as, as a, an agile political party or political formation, all you have to do is counter that and just go to the ground and ensure that your people come out and vote for you. But coming back to IBC, I think it's totally, you know, uh, unfair, you know, to subject the people of Mombasa and Kakamega County to this kind of anxiety. I sympathize with the candidates because, uh, you know, for the candidates, it's a question of you've done so much and then there's a gap and then you have to start from ground zero again to do so much, you know. And then they also don't have the, 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 the benefit of enjoying a public holiday that is nationwide during the voting. So those, those are things that would essentially affect voter turnout and probably would call for them to invest a lot more resources at a time when I think most politicians are broke. But let me say that, you know, some of these things are things that uh, will happen in future unless the perpetrators of, 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 you know, what occasion the postponement of these elections, first of all, are dealt with. Okay. And then number two, you also realize that, uh, you know, from what is in the public domain, it does appear that the chairman of IBC again decided to act unilaterally. The other commissioners were just caught off guard by this decision. And you may want to ask yourself, if this is a chair of a commission who prides himself of having declared a winner of the presidential election under very tenuous circumstances, intimidation and all that, he declared a president-elect. Why is he succumbing to intimidation that is far removed from him to postpone the elections in these two counties? Yet, they were not even affecting him directly. Mm -hmm. And then... He postpones and leaves it open. 
So people don't even know when these guys will have their elections. It is totally unfair and it tells you that the incompetency at IBC is at its zenith. Okay. Uh, Wakili Echesa is coming to us via video link from Kakamega. Wakili, tell us how the situation is on the ground. Plus, uh, do you think uh, that uh, because uh, the initial postponement of these elections was said to have affected even the elections of August the 9th, to some extent, do you think that uh, this uh, will possibly be one of the questions or issues raised at uh, the presidential election petition uh, that we are anticipating? Of course, it will be an issue to be raised and determined by the Apex Court. Remember, the margin between Raila Odinga and William Ruto is just about 200,000 uh, votes. And it is possible that Kakamega and Mombasa would have reduced by far this margin if the residents had been allowed to go and choose their governors. Voters have interests in the elective positions, and the governor's position attracts the most interests. So people who opted not to go and vote because their governor candidates were not competing are quite a number, and that is going to be an issue. Back home here in Kakamega and far away in Mombasa, people are disappointed. Remember, people of Kakamega and Mombasa have a right to elect leaders of their choice, not at the whims of IABC, but as and at when the law decides. The inordinate delay shows the incompetency, the inefficiency of the chairperson of the IEBC and the entire commission. To the candidates, it is uh, giving, placing them in a very awkward position. Remember, campaigns are still on, logistics are still on, and they are continuing to incur financial losses without knowing when they will go to an election. It even portends a clear and immediate psychological and psychiatric consequences to the candidates. There is this narrative that whoever becomes a legitimate president of the Republic of Kenya is going to, to, to determine the outcome of Kakamega and Mombasa gubernatorial elections. That theory could be true that if William Ruto's uh, candidature or William Ruto's presidency is legitimized by the Apex Court, Malala of Kakamega and Omar of Mombasa may have an upper hand because they'll have absolute control of the government structures, the government machinery, the financing, the police, and so forth and so on. But remember that Jubilee played this game between 2013 and 2015, and it never worked out. When President Kenyatta went out fishing ODM members to place them in his cabinet and occasion a by-election and fill Jubilee candidates to get the numbers, the first was appointing Dan Kazungu of ODM to the cabinet, the subsequent by-election, Jubilee government, with a lot of power and money, lost to William Tango. They went and appointed in Kajado Central uh, the late Nkaiseri to become CS Internal Security. They fielded a country in the name of Tutui. He was defeated by Memusi of ODM in the subsequent by-election. Kenyans should not be surprised, and even Kenya Kwanzaa should not be surprised if William Ruto's victory is legitimized, but the people of Kakamega and Mombasa do a protest vote against William Ruto's presidency and not necessarily against Malala and against Omar. So this thing may go either way. If the, uh, the delay is being caused by some political players who think they will rip out of it, it may come to haunt them. It may come to surprise them through a protest vote by the two counties. Okay. Uh, this must uh, IBC chairperson Fula Chabukati in postponing indefinitely these elections cited the fact that uh, his team was working under extreme intimidation and harassment. Uh, but uh, there are claims here that uh, there could be possible mischief uh, on the part of the commission in, uh, in postponing these elections. What do you read in this? You know, the, there is a high probability that uh, there is a mischief and there's a high probability that there's no mischief. Because nobody knows the substantive reasons. Which is why Mr. Chebukati needs to come out and tell us the real reason as to why he has suspended the elections. Because when he says that uh, some of his staffers have been intimidated, blackmailed, harassed, you know, that's a statement in the air. He needs to place the information on the table so that even Kenyans can form a decision. But if he comes in close quarters and he says that... Uh, we have been intimidated, we don't think that we have the right energy to do this election, then uh, it creates a huge vacuum. The vacuum is going to be filled by toxic politics, by this uh, propaganda. So people will say, wait a minute, he's uh, created uh, suspense so that we wait for the Supreme Court's ruling. 
if Russo becomes the president, Malala gets a leg up, or Hassan Omar, or if it's Raelo Dinga, then uh, Ferdinand Baraza and uh, Abdul Somad. So, you know, there will be a lot of uh, rumors and innuendo surrounding this, which is the reason why he needs to come out with uh, clarity, so that Kenyans understand why. And he owes it to the candidates, he owes it to the voters, and he owes it to all stakeholders in Kenya to come out and call a spade a spade. He may have good intentions, but if there's no communication, people will assume that there's mischief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, going forward, and this is one of the issues that has been raised, and I'm sure it will be one of the issues in court, the fact that um, there are claims that in some areas, uh, voters came out, voted for the president uh, to a large extent, yet they failed to vote for the other uh, candidates in the other races, the governor's race, member of the National Assembly, Senate, and so forth. And that has been the discussion going forward. This issue of uh, postponement of the governor's election as well could be considered uh, an attempt to suppress voter turnout to some, to some extent. Do you think that probably we should start having this conversation of uh, distinguishing these elections, that uh, probably the presidential election should be uh, ideally be held at a different time uh, as opposed to at the same time with the rest? Yeah, I, I, <coughs> I think there's a big call for that. There's a, there's a big call for that. And uh, Dismas has always talked about presidential systems and how they work. You know, most of the presidential systems actually have midterm elections. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, the ele election of senators and, and, and uh, representatives are not at the same time with the president. They're essentially staggered. A good example in Africa is actually Liberia. You know, Liberia has a, a presidential system, and in 2011, I was in Liberia, and I witnessed the election when uh, George Ware, as a running mate to Winston Tubman, uh, came second, uh, first, in the first round they won, Ellen was number two. But when they went for the second round, uh, uh, Prince Johnson supported Ellen, and Ellen won. Now, the election was sort of very close, but they knew in two years, they're going to have another election. So Tubman was elderly and he retired. But George Weah got an opportunity to become the senator for Mozzerado. And it launched him, you know, as a serious contender. And in the subsequent election, he won and he took over from, from Ellen. So there's, there's, there's a call to do that, you know, to have, you know, the six elections separate. Or at least just have the presidential election on its own. But be it as it may, I mean, we cannot run away from the fact that there are two critical issues. One, there are certain counties where... Uh, people just woke up and went and voted for the president. You know, there are issues of irregularity. Where did they take the other ballot papers? And I think this has been a question in so many elections, and there's, there's, um, there's clarity on how that is a problem, you know, based on what the deputy president said about Juja in 2007. That in Juja, 80,000 people went and voted for the other elective posts. Uh, back then, it was just the MPs. Then 100,000 people went and voted for the president. So that disparity of 15,000, it is clear in the current election that you're talking about. There are places where people went and just voted for the presidential candidate. And the tune of votes adds up to more than 400,000. So if, if, if there was a question of these are guys who just decided that you're going to vote for the president, then the issue of Mombasa and, 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 and uh, Kakamega become very critical. Now, if we dispute that and say that, no, there, there was no voter suppression because there is a high likelihood that, uh, you know, these guys would have just voted the same way, then we need to come back and interrogate, then how come that in certain areas, these guys voted for the president and didn't vote for the other positions? Okay. Well, Wakil, what do you say about this, uh, the proposition that we could have staggered elections, probably to cure uh, the kind of problem uh, we're having? That would have been an ideal uh, approach to our election because even having our citizens vote for six candidates is cumbersome, even in terms of making uh, sound, salient political decisions. Perhaps time has come for us to stagger our elections, to even give the body organizing the election ample time to prepare for it. And perhaps the mix-up in, in terms of papers for Kakamega and Mombasa could be as a reason of having very many elective posts at one go. It is a brilliant idea that we need to pursue and live with as a nation going forward. We stagger the elections, we elect persons for the given positions at a particular time, and then after some interval of time, we elect others. 
it is in line with the democratic principles of making the correct choices and having a system that is free, fair and efficient. Gentlemen, are we saying that uh, the, the job is a bit too much for IABC? That uh, <laughs> handling all the elections maybe together or staggered is just too much for one co uh, commission, whether or not uh, the uh, budgetary allocation is appropriate or enough? Well, y you know, these, uh, the, the issue of uh, Kakamega as well as uh, Mombasa is not a logistical nightmare for IBC. It's simply a statement of incompetence. Because you remember, this IBC went to Europe where the ballots were being printed. One would have expected for them to notice that there is a discrepancy over here. So for me, I don't think it's really an issue that uh, they have no capacity for logistics. In my view, it's a capacity of uh, poor quality control. Because you recall even uh, in Rongai, the elections were not held. You recall that 75% uh, of the Kim's kids failed in one county, in Makwini, 75%. So really, it's not an issue that it's a logistical nightmare. It's just uh, poor quality control and a bit of incompetence. But again, now staggering elections in Kenya, Kenyans have got these uh, high appetites for politics. Now, if you have, uh, say, a presidential election as well as a parliamentary on uh, the first year and then these other seats on uh, the third year, Kenya may end up being on an election mode for the entire five years. Yet, this was you've always talked about, and I, you've made a very strong argument uh, previously about uh, the need not to have a six-piece uh, suit uh, type of voting, the need to put more attention on uh, how you vote for your governor, your senator, your member of the county assembly. It, uh, it would appear that uh, having the presidential election at the same time with the other races, it affects a lot of the decision making. Yes, it, it does, but I'm looking at it from a moral perspective who is held captive by politicians. Because whoever becomes a uh, president, say, year one, and uh, has got maybe a majority of the National Assembly, they'll want to work hard to ensure that they control the Senate and they control the Council of Governors when the next election is taking place. So instead of them focusing on uh, building the nation, coming up with uh, economic policies, their mind will be set on how do I retain, uh, how does my party retain power in the next election? Obviously, six-piece voting in Kenya doesn't make sense because most parties in Kenya don't have capacity for free, fair, and primary. Sorry, free, fair, and uh, yeah, primary election, primary, the party primaries. So allow Kenyans to be given a rich buffet to choose and pick. And in my view, Kenyans must continue abandoning six-piece till party leaders start pra practicing internal party democracy. So that uh, if it's uh, UDA, if it's uh, ODM, if it's UDM, if it's ANC, when they're having their party primaries, Everybody appreciates their free, fair, and credible. Most of the parties uh, a few days ago, they were just unpicking members because maybe they're donors, because they are close to the party leaders, and giving them uh, tickets. So six piece w w works if uh, the party leaders respect uh, democracy. But the idea of uh, staggering in Kenya could be a recipe. Because you realize for the situation of Kenya, for the last uh, almost uh, one year, People have just been uh, discussing politics, politics. So now you have uh, a presidential election which comes to an end uh, today. Then again, they start discussing who's going to be our governor, who's going to be our senator. So there's a high probability that Kenya will be on a campaign mode for five years. Now, we have spoken about Liberia. It also happens uh, in the U.S. But those people are not stuck to politicians and campaigns 24 hours. In fact, in majority of those uh, countries, you wouldn't even know that it's an election day. It's not even a public holiday. People walk into the polling station, they cast their ballots, they go back to work. But in Kenya, it becomes a public holiday. Six months, everything comes to a standstill. Even a number of investors in Kenya are seated. They are waiting. They want to see, is there going to be peace? Is there going to be a fracas? So, you know, they've been, uh, they've been uh, sitting back. You don't want uh, the entire nation in a campaign mode for five solid years. Okay. Uh, time now for us to take another break. When we come back, we'll be giving a chance to our viewers to share their opinions live on Inside Politics.